Jane Foley, Head of FX Strategies Rabobank. Good morning, Jane. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So, Jane, uh, I just want to kick off with what has the market priced in so far in terms of freight hikes? Three or four? You know, I do think it's four. If we look at the uh, performance of uh, euro dollar, perhaps in the latter, latter two months of, of the year, and actually the dollar index too, what we see um, is the dollar still the best performing G10 currency in, 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 in those final two months of, of last year. But we also saw this real build up of, of long dollar positions. Now, uh, that created uh, some disharmony in the market. We saw in early January the market really correcting back, getting rid of some of those long dollar positions. But that appears to have been quite short-lived. Um, if we look back at the dollar, it has been re uh, regaining some of those gains. at uh, Euro dollar again, uh, uh, well off uh, the, the recent uh, highs, pushing down again back towards that 113 handle, away from the 114 handle. And that, of course, is on the back of this persistent hawkishness of of the Fed or the uh, the Fed speakers that we, we've had in the last two months the movement uh, to accelerate tapering and, and 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 also to reduce the balance sheet and also to allow the market to price in as many as, as four interest rate hikes this year and uh, and going forward also into 2023 so the dollar is priced for quite a lot um, we're going to wait for next week's uh, Fed meeting to see what those signals are to see whether the dollar can really pick up more steam in, in regards to the upcoming Fed meeting, which is going to be extremely important, what are you looking at? I mean, what are you looking for? Um, what, what are the indications uh, from j Powell that you would like to hear? Well, we, we, a lot of courses is, is out there. They've already told us that they really want to start uh, correcting the size of the, of the balance sheet uh, this year. We've indi they've indicated that an interest rate hike will come in March. What's quite interesting recently is that a debate has come about about whether or not the Fed could actually hike by 50 basis points in March and then maybe pause for a little bit longer. So I think what the market wants to hear is, is a little bit more clarity. We know that they're going to hike interest rates. We know that the pace could be really quite progressive. But what we want to know is that is that 25 basis points and, and perhaps every quarter or, or are we actually going to be looking at the possibility uh, of a 50 basis points cut so I think the market wants a little bit more clarity I think also it wants some indication about that the, the pace uh, at which um, it will allow that the balance sheet to, to, to come uh, to, to reduce as well so more clarity but I think the Fed has given us an awful lot uh, to contend with over the last couple of months already. So do you think that Powell might be less hawkish than expected because of what's going on with, with the equity market? Well, certainly, you know, the, the, the outlook for the equity market is, is a consideration for the Fed. Um, the outlook, in, indeed, for a hard landing is a consideration for the Fed. And, and this is really going to be, you know, what they're up against this year. Now, there's a lot of accusations that the Fed is behind the curve, that they've started tightening too late. They've allowed CPI inflation to get to those 40-year year highs. And now they have to accelerate that pace and, and really bring back. But the danger is, is that they'll, they'll bring back, they'll take out... Uh, the, the, the monetary accommodation perhaps too quickly and, and that could balance the economy and lead to a hard landing. So uh, that's of course what they're trying to avoid. We want reassurances that they don't. The equity market is, is part of that puzzle. Uh, but I don't think the Fed is going to be less hawkish than he was last time he spoke so soon. It's only just a, a few days since a variety of, of Fed speakers have really indicated that we're allowed perhaps to think of four interest rate hikes, it would be a bit of a shock if he changed the tune just so quickly um, after these very hawkish signals. If we take a look at the bond market just for a second, we have the 10-year treasury at 1.86, the 30-year at 2.18 and the tier at 1.03. So what is signaling the bond market? That the Fed is actually behind the curve, as you just said a few seconds ago, or that the Fed is kind of serious on um, answering to inflationary pressures to the upside? We saw 7% year on year just well, I think last week. I I think if we look back into perhaps December and we saw then quite a, a, a fairly dramatic flattening of, of the yield curve and, and that really brought up a, a lot of uh, fears really about, oh, is the Fed going to move too fast? Is, what is the bond market trying to tell us? Is the bond market flattening too rapidly when the bond market flattens? You know, that's a sign that uh, investors are anticipating the economy will slow. Well, that's a natural reaction, of course, to the, the prospect of interest rate hikes. But if it flattens too quickly and, and certainly if it begins to show signs of inversion, that's when the markets really do get frightened about 
uh, recession. So right now, um, you know, the, the market's anticipation is that, you know, the Fed is not going to disrail uh, the, the the recovery, that growth is going to continue this year, that, that very, very, very many factors are in place to support that. But there is a tail risk here that the Fed could hike too fast, that it could bring the economy uh, to a standstill, that it could create a hard landing. Uh, and, and these are the signs that we were going to be looking out for, you know, as, as this year um, unfurls. Um, and Jane, final take on euro dollar and sterling against the dollar, which are two extremely interesting crosses. What is your um, reason target for the euro dollar considering the Fed, which is way more hawkish compared to the ECB? And on the other side, we saw pretty interesting developments uh, when it comes to, to, to Bank of England and today UK inflation rate, which soared to 30 year high. Um, and, and this is pretty significant. We have the sterling against the dollar up about two tenths of a percent at 1.3623. So, uh, can we have your very short-term targets? Um, well, I am a little bit worried about uh, sterling. I think sterling can perhaps uh, go a little bit higher in, in the nearer term, certainly maybe in, in this quarter. But after the Bank of England has, has hiked, uh, assuming it does in, in February, I think the, the sterling could begin to struggle. There's a lot of energy price hikes in the UK, uh, a lot of stress on real incomes. And I don't know if the bank can really follow through and hike by as much as the, the, the market is currently expecting it to. So that could hit sterling later in the year. Uh, with the dollar, I think the dollar against the euro can progress down down to, to 110, maybe around the middle of the year. But towards the end of the year, as the market begins to focus on normalization of policy from the ECB, uh, that too could could mean that uh, euro dollar begins to turn higher at that point. And I guess with normalization of the ECB policy means the end of PEP, correct? That, that's that, that's correct. But I mean, also, how much more policy is it going to do or how many more asset purchases is it going to, get, going to do through its other programs? And, and also, I think by the end of the year, the market is going to be focusing on interest rate policy as, as well. Thank you very much. Shane Foley, head of FX strategy, Rebelbank. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. And by the way, if your doc wants to say something, we're all ears. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks.